Want to know what my other favorite King books are? Stay tuned and find out. Alright guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Zach with Zach's Books and today I've got for you my Stephen King ranking books 11 through 20. Um, as I said in the updated top 10 video I did in at the beginning of November, I said that I was going to try and compile a ranking of the next King books. So I've made my list from my least favorite King book, which I've read 52, uh, all the way up to 11. Uh, today I'm going to be going in numerical order the opposite way, so like we're going to do 20 through 11, then we're going to do 30 through 21, and then all the way through to the end. I'm going to try and keep this brief, um, but I'm just going to kind of show you my 11 through 20, uh, kind of briefly describe like what the book's about, and we'll uh, just go from there. Uh, so uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and let's get into the list. All right, coming in at number 20 is The Institute, uh, obviously by Stephen King. So this is about a kid named Luke Ellis, and what happens is uh, at the beginning of the book, um, this place comes and tries to kidnap him. They murder his parents while they're asleep, and they take him away. And he's got this, um, he ends up at this school with kids with, like, awesome abilities and stuff like that. But I remember when I read this this year, this was a book that I thought was going to be a very good book and probably fall in my top 15. And it's in the top 20, so... So, yeah, I really did enjoy this book. I'm pretty sure I gave it five stars. So, there you have the Institute. All right, so the next book up is Dr. Sleep, number 19. So, this is one that I would like to reread uh, now that I have reread The Shining. Um, I eventually will, but I've got some other books I need to get to, obviously. So this book is the sequel to The Shining. This follows Danny Torrance. I think it's 20 years. It's a couple, it's a, like 15, 20 years after the events of The Shining. So obviously everything that took place in The Shining kind of correlates over to this. Um, there are differences between the movie and this, obviously, because the movie had to follow like what Kubrick did in 1980s The Shining versus what King did in his book. So this, a lot of people don't really enjoy this book as much because it kind of like takes like the Overlook Hotel and drags it into like some kind of like weird demonic vampire-ish kind of thing. Um, I didn't mind it. I thought it was actually really cool. I was really intrigued to see what happens with Danny. Um, by him making this book with Dr. Sleep being the sequel to The Shining, I would love to see what happens with... Uh, uh, Charlie in uh, the Firestarter book. I want to know what happens to her when she grows up. Like, I feel like that's a book he needs to do. So, get on that, Mr. King. So, number 19, Dr. Sleep. Alright, coming in in number 18 is his first published novel, Carrie. This is a classic. It's his first published book. Uh, without this book, we would not have the other 70-something other books that he has. Um, and if also was not for Tabitha King, his wife, for pulling this out of the garbage and saying, no, keep writing this, probably wouldn't have the same person we have. Uh, so this is about a girl who has a special ability. Um, it's kind of like pyrokinesis, which is kind of like what Charlie has in Firestarter. Um, but this is like a more way drown out version of it. It's basically if she was like in high school, I feel like. So... I did really enjoy this book. I gave it five stars. The reason why I think this book needs to be readdressed is the subtle fact that I read this like probably an hour after I finished The Stand. And honestly, I just have like no more effort or like energy in wanting to read anything because I just had finished a colossal book and just kind of wanted to get through this. So, but yeah, it was a really solid book. I really did enjoy it and I will need to reread this again at some point. So there you have Carrie at number 18. All right, coming in at number 17, we have got Cujo, the book about a killer St. Bernard. So this book is, I wouldn't say it's like annoying. I'm a big dog fan, obviously, Bailey, duh. And to just kind of read what I would say like, like the downfall of this dog that was like a really kind friendly dog and it just turns into this 
subtle beast like monster and it's just kind of like upsetting and it just kind of goes on a major killing spree there is like a story within that story where a woman is having an affair with another man and when she goes to go get the car fixed it happens to be with that guy and the car breaks down little as you know Cujo has already killed the owner the other guy uh, and so he's just chilling there waiting for her to show up and pretty much a very solid amount of the book is just her being trapped in a car with her son but there is a difference between the movie and the book in terms of the ending I think the book ending is not just a little bit more sad but it is also better in my honest opinion but Cujo is a very good book I really enjoyed it and it was mentioned in I think Needful Things when I read that um, which was kind of cool because they mentioned a St. Bernard that went nuts. And I thought that was just a nice little detail to throw in there because this is a Castle Rock story and that's, Needful Things is the last Castle Rock story. So, but I know, Keller St. Bernard, really great book, five stars. Cujo at number 17. All right, up at number 16, we have got The Stand, the complete and uncut edition. This is a book that I have got on a major reread list. Um, I think I came up. I came up with a list for I think it was one of the October uh, episodes I made, uh, where I ranked the next the five King books that I need to reread, or I think read in general. I think it was reread, and this was I think number two. There was I think Christine was number one, but this was on that list. I need to reread this book especially now that COVID's happened, or, well, it's still happening, but also that I saw the TV miniseries with this. This is one of those books where there are a very large amount of characters, and it's something that you really need to follow along with. It's a big, big thing that this book is, and it is one of King's best work, in my opinion. But it's something where I was a little lost the first time I read it because... There's just so many people we're following. There's so many different storylines going on. There's just a lot happening. Um, and I honestly think that doing a reread in this, I could honestly say it could end up breaking the top ten. So, The Stand, complete and uncut, currently sits at number 16 on my top 20. All right, coming in at number 15, we have got Misery. So this book is really solid. It's a little bit short. It's a lot of it shorter than The Stand. Um, this is about Paul Sheldon. He is an author who is a, well, an author. And one day he gets in a big car accident in the middle of winter. And what happens is his number one fan, Annie Wilkes, takes, her in, takes him in to nurse him back to health. But we find out that she is a major nutcase. Um... The hobbling scene in this book is traumatizing. It's a lot worse than in the movie. Um, it's a lot more graphic in the in the book, too. Um, I will say that there are little bits in this book that I don't like, which is why it is a little bit lower on the list. So the main character that he writes about in his Misery series is Misery Chastain. That is, the, obviously, it's the name of the main character. In his latest novel, he kills her off, and Annie Wilkes is not a fan of that. Not at all. So, Aho breaks loose, and it's just a really creepy and eerie tale. Like I said, it's just the little interludes of him writing the book, I just don't like it. So, for that reason, it falls at number 15, Misery. Alright, coming in at number 14 is Desperation. This is the counterpart to The Regulators, which he wrote as Bachman, which you'll see that in probably like two or three episodes. Um, the thing I like the most about this book is the creepiness, the eeriness, and the badassness of Kali and Trajan, uh, the police officer who like gets possessed by this evil spirit and is causing hell in this town, the town of desperation in Nevada. This, this book, yes, it's long, there is, like, religious aspects in this book, which I prefer to keep it out of the books, but whatever. This is a really solid story. If you can get through this giant book, I I personally think it's one of his best. It's a five-star read for me, and I just really enjoy the heck out of it. 
there's a lot of really cool scenes in this. Um, the the TV like movie thing they did with this was really great too. Was really great too. Ron Perlman did a really cool job as in Trajan. He he just really was awesome. So I really enjoyed this book, and it definitely is a five star. And this is another one I cannot wait to like readdress and reread in the future. So number fourteen, Desperation. All right. The next book up in place number 13 is the book that I think has fallen from grace for me. Um, this book sat in the top four for many, many months and probably even more than a year. Uh, it's the very first book I read in my Stephen King journey and is for sure one that needs to be reread. And that is The Long Walk by Richard Bachman, Stephen King. So this book is... A phenomenal book. I absolutely love the story. I love the premise. I love the characters. It's just it's kind of fallen out of grace for me because it's been so long since I have read it the first time and I just need to readdress it and I just love the story. There's a hundred, uh, I want to say it's a hundred young men and they all uh, go to this uh, thing called the long walk and what happens is there's only one winner uh, if you win, then you get, like, the general's, like, big prize, or it's, like, anything you want. Like, literally anything you want. Um, and then you get three warnings, and then after the third warning, you have to, like, walk at a certain pace. You literally just keep walking. It's a book about walking, but there's also, like, a lot more things involved with it. So, there's a hundred young men, you get three strikes, uh... If you keep if you continue going at a slower pace then I forget how many miles per hour it is but if you continue to go slower than that after your third warning you're not gonna win so yeah there is supposedly a movie coming out with this possibly that's something that I had read a while ago that a movie was coming out I'm actually really intrigued to see how they would do a movie with this and I actually would love to see it so but yeah, no, really cool book. Absolutely loved it. It has fallen a little bit down on my list from number four to number 13, but there are just some really good books out there. So coming in at number 13, The Long Walk. All right, coming in at number 12 is my first collection, and I think it's the only collection in the top 25, 25 or 30, I believe it is. Um, but that is Different Seasons. So this has got four phenomenal stories in this book. Um, there is Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption, Apt Pupil, The Body, and The Breathing Method. Um, and when I read this, Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption is a guy who get is about a guy who gets wrongfully accused of murdering his wife and lover, um, Andy Dufresne. And it's just a really phenomenal book made into a phenomenal movie. Uh, that got five stars. The Body, which came into being a movie called The Stand, which came into being a movie called Stand by Me, both very phenomenal. The Body got five stars from me. Apt Pupil is another one that did become a movie, uh, which The Body is about a group of four friends who uh, uncut like there's like this dead body and they go on this journey to go try and find it and like they discuss like discover themselves it's like a bondage of it's like a story about friendship is like young men and it's a really cool story um and then apt pupil is in this which is about a kid who uh befriends this like old german soldier uh that was part of world war ii and the kid's really sadistic i really didn't like the kid in this uh that actually ended up becoming a movie as well i think i only gave it three and a half stars when i read it um, there's actually my least favorite out of the four stories, and for some people it's like their favorite. Um, and then The Breathing Method is about a woman who's pregnant, and this guy who like instructs her, instructs her um, with this um, really weird like breathing method on like giving birth, hence the name of The Breathing Method. Um, and it's got a really weird twist ending, and I think it's like really weird. But I actually enjoyed it better than Apt People. That got like four stars. So overall, this was like a four and a half star complete story set. Um, I absolutely loved all of them. They were all really great and highly recommended. So there you have 
different seasons at number 12. All right, if you've watched the top 10 and you've watched this video up until now, I'm sure you guys are probably wondering, Zach, where the hell is any Dark Tower book? Um, I will say to me as a whole, the Dark Tower is probably Stephen King's number one top work. Um, but unfortunately, it does need to be broken down into eight separate novels, um, which my all-time favorite one falls as number 11 on this list, and that is The Drawing of the Three. So in this, we are still following Rolling the Gunslinger. This is book two in the series. In this, we end up meeting the rest of the quartet. Uh, Jake comes back. We get to meet um, Eddie Dean, which is... My all-time favorite, like, King character besides Jack Torrance and um, Judd Crandall. Um, Eddie is just, like, my all-time favorite character. Um, and then we get to meet um, uh, Odetta Wilson. She's got, like, a couple different names. There's Odetta Wilson. Yeah, she's got a couple different names, but the one I think she mainly gets addressed as is Susanna, uh, which is uh, the song of Susanna, book six. Because she's like got two personalities. She's a black woman in a wheelchair. Um, she's it's like two personalities. They eventually like merge into one um, to like coexist with each other. To one's like a really racist person. The other one's a really nice lady. And they like come up with a plan to like be together and like coexist with each other so that the journey can continue. Because otherwise, like the racial like the racist one like wants to kill Roland and Eddie I think I think he's in this one he might be in the wasteland Jake is in most of these books I think he pops back up in possibly the wastelands and then I think we meet Oi also in the wastelands you can't forget Oi in your cotet um or he's a the bumbler I think was the kind of animal he is uh he's like kind of like a dog creature but I think it's the bumbler and his name is Oi so also one of my favorite characters in the Dark Tower series. Um, but yeah, you meet all these characters, and then the journey pretty much begins. You go into the wastelands in the next book, and then you hit a wall with Wizard and Glass. Um, but besides that, this book is really solid. I gave it five stars. The whole series is like four and a half stars. Really cool book. I really enjoyed it, and I liked meeting all the characters. Again, my all-time favorite, Eddie Dean, is just a stud muffin. So, there you have it, number 11, The Drawing of the Three. All right, so there you have 11 through 20. I know I said I was going to try and keep it brief, but I just don't know when to shut up, so it's a little bit longer than we expected. Um, but yeah, really awesome stuff. I love all these books. Uh, if you are really intrigued with continuing this, let me know in the comments, because I've got my list of 52 or 53 books made. Um, and I want to share them on with you guys. So make sure you let me know in the comments, A, what your favorite King books are. Maybe like a top five or something like that. Um, and just let me know if you want me to continue with this because I've got a list of 40 other books I need to share with you guys. So yeah, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys later. Later. Later.